Hello everyone, uh, this is Aniket Thakur and in this video I'm going to tell you the difference between compiler, interpreter and assembler. So before we uh, go to that, let's understand what a translator is. So translator uh, is a generic term that we use uh, which basically converts a source language into a target language and some examples of translators are compilers, assemblers, high level translators, decompilers. So we'll see uh, what compilers are in some time, but just to give a high level overview of this translator. So compilers convert a high level code to low level code. For example, uh, Java uh, has both compiler and interpreter in it, uh, which we'll see in the next couple of slides. Uh, but compilers basically do that. It, they convert high level code to low level code. And please note that I'm saying low level code. It need not be uh, the machine level code. It could be, but it did not be, right? Uh, so next is assemblers. So assemblers uh, job is to convert uh, the uh, assembly language code to machine code. So if you have 8085 or 8086 microprocessors and if you have ever uh, written code for it, then the module that converts your assembly language code to machine code is basically the assembler. Uh, then you have high level translators. Uh, these basically convert uh, one a programming language to another for example let's say you want to convert java to c uh, finally you have decompilers so decompilers basically decompile your low level code into a high level code for example let's say you have java byte codes then decompilers kind of convert it back to your high level source code so if you if you would have noticed the ides today or the integrated development environments have become so intelligent that they do this automatically for you so for example, let's say you are writing uh, a program in Java and you click on object class, which is a Java JDK level class. So it will kind of automatically decompile the bytecode and give the source code to you. So let's go to the difference between a compiler and an interpreter. So the way compiler works is it will scan the entire program in one go. It will try to analyze and see if there are any issues. And if it does not find any issues, then it converts the entire code into machine language and then executes it into one go, right? Whereas interpreter, what it does is it will first iterate over the source code and it will convert into an intermediate code, right? And then it will go line by line on that intermediate code. It will convert it into an machine level code and then execute it, right? So that's the very basic difference between how compiler and an interpreter works. So a compiler basically uh, compiles the entire uh, high level code into uh, low level code or machine level code that your CPU can understand and it executes it. Whereas interpreter will kind of uh, generate an intermediate code in between and then execute it line by line by converted, converting it into machine uh, understandable language and then executing it. So some other differences between compiler and interpreter. So uh, if if you understood uh, the last point, then you could imagine that since the whole code is compiled in a single go into a machine language, the execution of program is much faster in a compiler than an interpreter. Uh, however, uh, if you break this into two steps, so first is analyzing the code and second one is execution of the code. Uh, compiler generally takes more time in analyzing the code than an interpreter but the execution is much faster than an interpreter right so overall if you see uh, compilers are much more faster than an interpreter so uh, coming to the second point uh, compilers do not generate any intermediate code so they are kind of uh, memory efficient because uh, in, in in interpreters some extra memory is needed to store that intermediate code so that is not the problem faced by the compilers right so the next difference is compiler uh, kind of analyzes the entire code in a single go and then generate a report of if there are any issues with the code after uh, analyzing the entire source code whereas if you see interpreter the way it works is it will convert it into an intermediate language and then it will go step by step each line convert it into a machine code and then execute it so at any point of time on at any line it it encounters an issue it will just stop there and notify it out to you so it will not even scan the next lines right so that is another major difference between a compiler and an interpreter 
so uh, you can see this is a diagrammatic representation so uh, you have a source code uh, in compilation you convert that source code into an executable code and then your machine CPU will execute that code directly whereas in case of uh, interpreters your source code is converted into an intermediate code which is then executed line by line by your interpreter by converting it into a machine level code and then executing by your CPU or your processor so uh, finally what is assembler so I think I had covered some part of it uh, before uh, assembler is basically that module that converts your uh, assembly level language which is your low level language into a machine language uh, so uh, I had uh, worked on this in my college days where I had 8085 or 8086 uh, microprocessors which is I think uh, 16 and 32 bit uh, microprocessors so you basically uh, have a low level language called assembly language uh, programming where you write your code and assembler is the module that converts uh, this uh, language into the machine code and your, then your CPU kind of executes it. So uh, let's go to some examples. So Python uh, is an interpreted language whereas C, C++ are compiled language. Uh, however, uh, Java is both a compiled and interpreted language. Uh, we'll see uh, how Java works in some time. All right, so if you see this diagram, uh, we have, let's see, a file called foo.java where we have a Java code. So when we first execute, right, how, how do we run this uh, Java code, right? So first we, we do Java C, foo.java, which will uh, convert your foo.java to foo.class. So what happens here is that your Java code is compiled by a Java C compiler into an intermediate bytecode right and which is stored in java.class now this bytecode is independent of platform right so if you take this foo.class into any operating system it can be a linux it can be mac or it can be windows as long as you have a vir java virtual machine installed on your operating system so you can think of jvm as a layer above your operating system uh, which kind of understands the bytecodes so as long as you have JVM installed it will understand the bytecode and it will execute it for you right this is what makes Java platform independent right which is one of its main feature so let me repeat the process so first you run Java C which kind of compiles your Java foo.java uh, high level language into a bytecode and then you run Java foo, foo which basically reads this class file which is basically the byte codes and then uh, Java is nothing but an interpreter which will interpret the bytes code and run it for you on the uh, Java virtual machine right so that's the way Java works so it is both compiled as well as interpreted so as and when uh, the programming languages evolved we wanted to make it more faster and this is where just in, ta just in time compilation comes into picture so what happens in just-in-time compilation? So as its name suggests, uh, it kind of compiles your uh, bytecodes into native machine language on the fly. Now, uh, unlike uh, normal interpreters, which uh, kind of iterate, like converts your entire code into an intermediate code and then iterates over line by line where and converting each line into machine code and then executing it, what this does is it will take a subroutine and it will convert the entire thing into uh, a machine language and then execute it right so it is unlike uh, interpreter which goes line by line this kind of uh, compiles the whole subroutine and then executes into your machine uh, one more difference is that just-in-time compilation is uh, happening in runtime unlike interpreters which kind of happen uh, before runtime phase so uh, just-in-time compilation has uh, all the data necessary to make uh, the whole process more efficient right so that's the one of the major difference so it 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 makes better op optimization in terms of compilation and performance so uh, one common question that might arise in JIT is that uh, you know every time you invoke a function and you, you invoke a JIT compiler it will take some time to uh, compile that bytecode into the machine code right so this is where hotspot compilation comes into picture so the way it works is uh, JVM maintains a kind of count of the subroutine or method that is getting invoked and if it uh, if it thinks that uh, the number of count is high 
is getting higher than a particular threshold then what it will do is it will just pick that subroutine and uh, it will invoke JIT compilation on it and it will compile that bytecode into machine level language and from there on whenever that subroutine is invoked it will kind of directly execute this uh, machine level code that it has compiled using the JIT compiler instead of compiling it every time or interpreting it every time right so this basically increases the performance to a large extent and uh, that there are advantages like there is no initial de delay in compilation and the whole process becomes very fast right so uh, that's pretty much it uh, let me know if you have questions thank you